Alright guys, welcome to another beer review. Today we've got a beer from, uh, who are these guys? Holden's. Uh, Holden's Brewery over in do, 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 uh, Dudley. So, this is the Wood Seton Pale Ale. Clocking in at 4.5%. Quickly try and read you what it says on the back, because the writing is a little bit small. So tales of lost brew notes are the stuff of myth and legend in the brewing industry. However, while travelling through the archives for our centenary celebration last year, a fourth generation Holden chanced upon a tatty book uh, languishing at the bottom of a filing cabinet. To our great excitement, we found a page of brewing notes. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Pitch rates, hops, grain malts. Fermenting vessel calculations, all from the 1910s and 20s. A brewer's dream. I could imagine that being quite exciting, actually. Our master brewer team, apologies for terrible writing, it's uh, a little bit small for me to read. Uh, Our master brewing team have been hard at work recreating the this bygone brew from our long-lost brewing notes. We hope you enjoy it as much as we have enjoyed recreating it. A classic old English pale ale bruising, brewing, brewed using the finest English pale and crystal malts, giving both biscuit and caramel notes on the nose, followed with a burst of traditional fuggles and goldings hops, leading to a lingering, moorish, rich, dry finish. Food match is enjoy with bar snacks, pork pie, plowmans or scampion chips. That all sounds fantastic. Minus the scampi, because why you'd want to put fish with beer, or just eat fish in general, I have no idea. Although I do like tuna and salmon, and like fish cakes and fish fingers and stuff, but yeah. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about that, I'm here to talk about this beer. Awesome looking label, I like that. With like an old fashioned photo in there. Or illustration, I should say, not a photo. Pure black country. So yeah, 500ml bottle, 4.5%. Pick this up in, as no, not Asda, Aldi in the seasonal range which i think it's not necessarily seasonal beers it's just seasonal selections that they stock i'd imagine but yeah lovely traditional looking label and that is the holden's crown which is uh, definitely a keeper so as i'm doing this review and destroying the bottle cap because it's uh, on the floor uh, i'm Finally getting round to watching Black Mirror. Now, I'm a big fan of Charlie Brooker, especially with uh, like Weekly Wipe and uh, Screen Wipe. I find his uh, writing to be really engaging. And of course, the first episode was uh, quite infamous because it was about the uh, Prime Minister having to fuck a pig live on TV uh, because the princess um, was being held, ran held at ransom. Uh, to cut a long story short, I would be not fucking any pig for the royal family because, um, yeah, I really do not care for them and I think we don't need them. Anyway, not here to talk about uh, the monarchy or politics or social problems. We're here to talk about the medicine to a lot of social problems, beer. And uh, using my little stein from Germany. So beer in a glass then, and that is a lovely sort of golden colour. Uh, lovely little flecks of carbonation there, nice and slow. Beer poured with about one finger's worth of a foamy white looking head. Yeah, very crisp, clean, refreshing looking, as you would expect. Although, I'd imagine back in the day, the beer would be uh, consistently cloudier, or cons consistently, considerably cloudier. Um, yeah, so I don't know if they've like filtered it. Um, or even if the recipe dictated that they do it. Um, but, yeah, who knows? I wasn't around back then. So, uh, anyway, let's uh, give it a sniff. It's got that sort of, like, um, puffy, crisp sort of aroma. Like a maize potato crisps. Like, you know, like plain monster munch sort of, like, puffed up crisps. Slight hint of biscuit in there. Not really getting too much sweetness uh, from the malt character, to be honest. It is more like cracker bread, biscuity, straw-like 
in the aroma. A little hint of a hoppy, citrusy character on the back end, but nothing too pronounced. It's just got that like quintessentially British aroma to it. It's very simple, straight to the point, no outbirth flavours, nothing offensive either. Yeah, I can't get over that sort of like opening a packet of crisps sort of aroma coming out of this one. But anyway, the beer itself smells okay. Nothing to shout or write home about, but at the same time, I'd rather have that than like, Jesus Christ, this stinks. So anyway, let's get on with the review. Cheers. And they've nailed it on the description. I know some people say you shouldn't read taster notes beforehand, but I've said it a few times before. Sometimes I like to do it, so then I can see if the beer matches up with what they're promising. But at the same time, I like to try and go in as blind as possible to see how well I can detect aromas, flavours and that sort of thing. But yeah, it's, it's what you expect from uh, the style as well as what they've promised on the, the label. Nothing to... Could you describe a beer as historic? You wouldn't think that this is an old recipe. Um, you'd think that's just like a, a standard beer that they brew. So it leads me to think if they've potentially deviated away from that recipe, or if the recipe was not too dissimilar at all. But yeah, it's a, it's a lovely, crisp, biscuity, very slightly sweet, just a very, very slight sweetness. And uh, not really citrusy in the hop character, but it has got a really nice lingering hoppy bitterness. That sort of dries out the palate, so you want to go in for another sip. But you know what? This is one of those like inoffensive, sessionable, enjoyable beers where it's not best suited to do a review of because there's really not much to pick apart or pick out from this beer and it's one of those ones where you've tried this beer many times from different breweries under different names that sort of thing it's got that familiarity to it but it's like one of those beers where if you're in a pub and you just wanted a nice simple session and you weren't too impressed with like the the carlings the the cores or anything like that and this was on cask You'd, you'd, you'd be happy to just session a couple of pints this, a couple of halves with it, get yourself some pub grub, that sort of thing. Yeah, have a great time with your mates or family or whatever, or if you're just uh, like reading the paper and you just want a beer that's just going to see you through a couple of hours. You know, it's one of those sort of beers. Not terribly exciting, but who says beer has to be? Uh, there's nothing wrong with traditional, simple beers and... I really enjoy them. This is, yeah, it's one that I'd happily buy again. Um, I'd like to try another one of the pale ales. Because, you know, we're so used to really hot forward pale ales now. That this would be a really good beer if you're having a little bit of a session or a bottle share. It's going to cleanse your palate. And uh, if you have too many, it's going to get you a little bit buzzed. It's a quite a dangerous beer. But, yeah, just look at that. Looks awesome, doesn't it? I'm definitely getting that crisp sort of flavour when you put when you drink it with that head. Which I actually quite like to be honest. So in terms of a rating then for the Wood Seton Pale Ale from Holden's, I'm gonna give that one a very solid seven out of ten. Um I think seven out of ten is my sort of like level where I would happily buy it again and you know if I was in Aldi and I just wanted something that I didn't really want to sit down and review standing up in this case and I just wanted a, a couple of beers you know to watch a film or while I'm playing on the Xbox or you know to have with like a curry that sort of thing I'd happily pick this one up again and I'd love to try it on cask at a pub so I'm just saying that it's got sugar in there which um yeah you're not really getting any sweetness and you're not really getting that that sugar turn it into um, ABV. 
lovely crisp body to it, not too light, not too watery. Plays into that sessionability of it. And uh, yeah, 7 out of 10, definitely worth a go if you've never tried it before. If you have tried it before, of course, let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. If you've tried anything else from this brewery, recommendations are always greatly received. Check out, I always forget the name of this brewery, check out Holden's down below. Check out my uh, Pale Ale playlist as well. And uh, more importantly, I hope you'll join me next time for another beer review. So thank you guys for watching. I shall hopefully see you later. Cheers.